Hello, the Paul Rubens company were kind enough to recently send me this set of Meiliang watercolour paints. It's a 36 set of 5 milliliter tubes. They fit nicely in this moulded plastic soft touch container. They match up exactly with the half pan Meiliang set. So the tubes would definitely be good for refilling this. I'll see how the two different paint sets compare later in the video. The tubes are metal and feel perfectly nice. And the information they've got on them in English is a number, a name, pigment information, light fast information and an opacity box. I don't have any information on how the light fast was tested, but all the tubes in this set have either four or five stars, which I'm assuming mean good to excellent. I'm going to swatch them all out to start with. So I've got a big mixing tray out. The first thing I notice about the tubes is that the opening is sealed. So I use a point in the end of the lid to pierce the seal. The first paint that I squeeze out is the white and there's quite a lot of separation of the binder. The only other paint that had separation as well was the yellow ochre and the rest of the tubes in the set were really nice consistency when they came out. I wasn't able to pierce the second tube with the point in the end of the lid so I had to use a separate tool to pierce the seal. But the lids did work fine on the rest of the tubes. I thought I'd just show you me squeezing out the first half of the paint set so you can see what they're like when they come out of the tube. I've only put a black line in for the white paint and I squeeze some more out and you can see the separation there. All the paints in the set were classed as semi-transparent except for seven opaque paints and I found this to be fairly accurate. To swatch the paints I added a little bit of water to each paint on the tray and I'm painting the top portion of each box in quite thick paint. Then I'm coming underneath it with clean water and then touching into the paint above so that you can see how the paint flows into the water. The paints have an ever so slightly gooey texture when you're first mixing them out of the tube but then once you've mixed them a little bit they dissolve into the water quite well and they feel pleasant to paint with. I'm painting onto Canson XL watercolour paper which is cellulose and I'm using a silver black velvet brush. You can see here this paint dispersing quite nicely into the water they don't all disperse in exactly the same way, but they are relatively uniform paints. I'll swatch a few more in real time so that you can see that and then I'll speed through the rest. I don't recognise some of the pigment numbers, but there are quite a few single pigment paints in the set. This red violet is one of my favourite paints in the whole set. It's absolutely beautiful colour and paints nicely. Just to mention about the names, in my half pan Meiliang set, there was one set of names on the box and then another set of names on the actual paints. 
these Meiliang tubes match up with one of the sets of names. This light sky blue, or it's also called Verdita in my other Meiliang set, it looks like it's got white mixed in it, but it just says it's PB15 colon 3. And this is what the paints look like mixed with a little bit of water on the tray. You can see they're quite nice and concentrated and smooth. And here are the second half of the paints. Windows down, scattered clouds, smell of spring, I'm sad. Open road, you sit in close, let's go somewhere far away. Cause if all I have is you, then I'll be just fine. So next I want to just use a couple of the Meiliang half pan paints and compare them with the tube ones. I picked the ultramarine so that you could just take a look at it. It's the most granulating one in the sets but it's still not that granulating at all really. And you can see here that the half pan set re-wets really nicely. I also picked the olive green, it's another of my favourites in the set just because it's a really nice natural coloured green. So I couldn't honestly tell that much difference between the pans and the tubes. If anything, I'd say that the pans are slightly smoother in their consistency. The tubes have got a little bit of kind of strange texture, like scaliness to them almost. I'll show you the rest of the swatches up close, so you might be able to see it a bit better. I'm not sure how well it's showing up in this video, but some of the paints more than others. When they dry, there's kind of a strange texture to them. It's not granulation, but almost a kind of crinkly pattern to them. I wouldn't say it's hugely noticeable, but it is different from using professional watercolour paints. The other thing I'll point out is that where the paint's applied quite thickly, it dries to a bit of a sheen, like you can see here on the purpley pink. So here are my old swatches from the half pan set by way of comparison. I just think they look slightly smoother in their finish. The other thing I noticed is that the half pan set has a different light fast star system. To be honest I'd take both of them with a pinch of salt until I've seen them tested properly. Next up I decide to do a splodge and scribble painting which is where I just splodge colour down in roughly the right places and go over with a pen once it's dried. I'm just using the Meiliang tube paints and I'm doing it in a Cardi Fat book, which is thin 100% cotton watercolour paper. I'm using this photo that I found on Pinterest as a reference picture. I'll keep the painting section in real time, just so that you can see how simple it is and I'm not spending a huge amount of time on it, though I will edit out washing my paintbrush.
Once the paint's dry, I start going over with a pen. I'll link to all the products I use in the description box below. I'd found the paints to be really pleasant to paint with, but I'd say one thing I didn't enjoy so much was the uniformity of the paint. Normally when I'm painting a landscape like this, I'll be using paints which have got different levels of granulation in them and paints that separate out, that kind of thing. And that leads to more interest in the painting. I have to say, I don't think I did a particularly good job on this first paint layer, but I do think it's blander than it would have been if I'd used my normal paints. Though granulation and variation in paints isn't necessarily for everyone, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. After adding some more paint details, I use a Holbein Soft White Artist's Pencil to put in some white. And this is a Caran d'Ache Luminance Black Pencil. So to summarise, I'd say that the Mei Liang tube set is a really good student grade set. It's currently for sale on Amazon at around £30. They're vibrant, well pigmented colours and once you get past an initial kind of gooeyness, perhaps of the binder, then the colours dissolve and disperse quite nicely. They seem to mix well and layer well and there's no chalkiness about them. Although there was shine in the thicker applications of paint, for the thickness I used in this painting here, there was no shine present at all. If I was being picky and comparing them to much more expensive professional grade paints, then I'd point out the very slight texture that some of them have, kind of that scaly, crackly look, though it's not particularly noticeable in this painting. I don't think this painting did particularly good justice to the paints though. The painting didn't really turn out very well. If I'm being picky as well, I'd also say that they're not as smooth and clear as the smoothest professional watercolour paints, but they're also not as granulating as the nice granulating watercolour paints. They're quite uniform in their characteristics in this set, whereas I do prefer to have the variation and the different characters of the different professional watercolour paints. I also don't know how reliable the light fast ratings are for these paints. Well, I hope that was a useful video for anyone who's interested in this set. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye!